Hi there traders, welcome to this week's video blog, hope it finds you well. Uh, so last week's trading was pretty mixed uh, across the board, um, no better symbol of how mixed it was than the currency pair that you're now seeing on the charts, the pound yen. This was a trade that I've been in since around about the, I think it was the 19th of February, um, but last week just didn't do anything and this was the case across many currency pairs and uh, capital preservation was the order of the week um, rather than capital growth and that's absolutely fine there's going to be weeks that are better than others on the whole since the start of 2014 the weeks have been pretty good but as you can see look at the difference between what's happened up until this date lovely clean movements and then bang not really anything so uh, there are times when I will override my rules people always ask me do I rigidly 100% stick to my my trading plan and I'd say yes however there is a, probably a two or three percent discretionary element that I will use um, and this is purely based on experience where I will override my rules in this case here I decided just to close the trade down for a tiny loss because the market was giving me no evidence that there was um, there was any moves likely to take place so rather than keep the risk on over the weekend I decided to just close the trade down and if another opportunity sets up um, for me to get into this trade then I will do um, otherwise there's no point holding the position over the weekend um, in terms of the setup prior to the previous week why did we want to take this trade it's good some good learnings here because the technicals were all screaming for a move lower let's just zoom in well as you can see from my trend line along the top we had a lovely resistance level in this channel formation um, price came all the way back to it and gave us this lovely high test bar just there we also had some fantastic hidden divergence suggesting that the continuation of this trend was about to take place because this peak here was higher than the previous one however the peak on the price action was lower than the corresponding previous peak so suggested to me that the market wanted to move lower everything was in place it was a nice healthy 786 retracement on the Fibonacci as well and the market triggered the next day and threatened for a couple of days to head down however the yo-yo effect on my P&L was was very frustrating during the week up one minute down the next up the next minute down the next break even and it just became frustrating so um, by Friday evening just before the markets closed I decided to uh, to pull out of this trade for a small loss and, and that's absolutely fine because a small loss is better than being in a position where you've lost the confidence in a trade and that's the key thing really if you lose confidence in a trade you really shouldn't be in it and if you can come out of the trade for a minimal loss or minimal profit or break even then um, absolutely fantastic so that was pound yen really good technical setup but not all technical setups will follow through as you expect so it's all about preserving your capital when they don't do as you expect um, the dollar cad was a trade that we looked at on last week's video uh, last couple of videos um, again another trade that's really bumbled along sideways I was expecting it to pull back a little bit after such a strong move higher uh, it did bumble, bubble along sideways didn't quite achieve the 1% so we're still in this trade um, will it come down a little bit more potentially however there's nothing more I can do here it still looks like it's got potential to go higher it's not as bad as the 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 pound gen example we looked at there is still movement here we may just have to sit through a retracement before it heads higher um, to to to, to give us that profit on the trade so dollar cad is a trade that still looks fine yes it's showing a bit of a loss but nothing to worry about our stop loss is well beneath this big buyer bar here where we look to enter so uh, it's protected by the low of that bar and also the 50 moving average so we may just have to sit through a mild retracement on this but still happy to stick with it um, so that had the knock on effect on a couple of other trades that we, we look to execute over the last couple of weeks one was the pound cad Pancab we came out of this week sadly um, it went on to hit its 2% which was fantastic so it went and hit its 2% mark so that meant we bought our stop loss on P2 to the 1% level um, however during this week it came back in a retracement alongside the dollar CAD retracement took out our stops at the 1% level um, banked us 1% on P position two and obviously the the one percent on position one which was uh, which was a good trade didn't generate as much as I'd like to have obtained from this trade because everything looked very very strong from this turning point here however um, profit is better than a loss on this trade so we're now out of this trade it's looking very very weak there's a pretty strong level of resistance just there we're also seeing some divergence so all the signs are saying that it actually wants to reverse so not being in this trade long is not a bad thing we banked our profits and we look for other opportunities um, EuroCAD 
very similar setup. We can remember this from previous previous video blogs. Um, we saw the the really nice turning point, the double bottom formation, and then it started to rally um, after a bit of stagnation going sideways and hit our one percent. So that banked our position one profit and enabled us to move our stop on position two to break even. Hasn't quite hit the 2% level yet, so we just need to leave this trade be. It is showing a little bit of weakness. What I may do is bring my stop underneath this swing swing low just here, because if that gets broken, there is a concern for me. So just to lock in a little bit of extra profit, I'm probably gonna bring my stop, rather than having it break even, I'm gonna bring it just below there, five points below, including the spread, just to preserve that, because again, like with the pound CAD, we can see a pretty strong level of resistance. We can see divergence, high test bar, there's cause for concern here. So my position long is looking in in doubt. So I'm gonna look to try and preserve some of the, the profits I've made on my second position to squeeze out maybe one and a half percent on that trade in total. So uh, Eurocad again, leaves you a little bit frustrated but we can't get frustrated by trades. We just have to say to ourselves, on other occasions, we're going to get two, three, four percent. On this occasion, we are seeing signs that technical signs that suggest the market wants to go against us. So let's get our profit, let's bank it, and let's go and look for another opportunity. So that's the EuroCAD, and it plays into the scenario and the correlations with the dollar CAD. If the dollar CAD is going to retrace next week, it means Canadian strength. So this will mean that this will have a knock-on effect on the EuroCAD and the pound CAD as well, to the detriment of our positions. So we may get opportunities to re-enter in a week, two weeks time when the CAD starts to uh, to head up again. Uh, but for now, let's preserve capital on this trade. Uh, EuroGUP was a trade that promised a significant turn lower, but uh, obviously the strong move on the Euro on Friday scuppered plans a little bit. Um, so this was the EuroGUP trade that we, uh, we took this week. Um, as we saw a couple of a couple of weeks ago, the start of February, we saw this bounce off resistance at the top of its channel. This was the first retracement we got from that strong move lower, and it was the 618, so a very significant retracement, all the way back to the 618. What I liked most about it was it was back to the 618 and the 50 moving average, so it had correlation of resistance there, giving us confidence that this was going to provide a strong ceiling to push price lower. The high test bar was absolutely wonderful. So it was entries underneath, stop just above. It failed to get to our 1%. So still in this trade, it's threatened to go against us. But Friday actually started to, to come back down again. So I've got no concerns with this trade. I'm going to leave it be. Uh, yes, the euro strengthened on Friday, but so long as the pound remains stronger, this will cause the market to go down and still offers us a nice healthy potential of a good 150 points or more if it goes right down to the bottom of its channel. So a very nice technical setup, beautiful, beautiful technical setup. Markets come against us a little bit, but didn't hit our stop loss. So we leave the trade alone and we let it be for next week, but a nice technical setup there. So that was the Euro GP. Euro dollar was very interesting. And this was the reason why I used a bit of correlation. I used the analysis of the Euro dollar to look to trade the Euro GBP. Because so I looked at the Euro dollar showing quite a lot of reasons, technical reasons for a move lower. Um, as you can see by my lines here, I measured the distance from this low to where it topped out and retraced. And again, from where the retracement finished all the way back out to where it started to stagnate again. And this was again a bit like the ABCD pattern that we looked at with gold, this is a much more subtle ABCD pattern. So from this point here, A to B, B to C, C to D, was identical, absolutely identical. 205 points on this leg here and 205 points on this leg here. What I like most about it is it pulled back and then double topped with stochastic divergence so it gave me a lot of clues that the market wanted to head lower thus backing up my euro gbp trade short i.e if euro was going to be weak this was going to have a positive effect on my euro gbp trade so this was giving me lots of confidence to go short there was a high test bar followed by an inside bar high test which i took the break of low and it broke on the 26 and strongly moved down everything looked absolutely brilliant and then the market 
decided to rally back up on Thursday and Friday. It did get to my 1% target, which was about 60 pips, so I was able to move stops to break even. Um, again, a 1% trade, a 1% profit on this trade, which isn't ideal because we're looking for positive reward to risk, but based on what happened, a better scenario than a full loss on that trade. So a very, very nice technical setup, ABCD pattern there with divergence, with a double top, with strong price action, giving confirmation absolutely every reason why we should have taken this trade, but the market has decided to go uh, strongly against us. This is why how capital preservation this week has really worked to our advantage. Rather than taking big losses by not trailing our stop losses, we've moved stop losses to give us an advantage in the market to lock in some profits. So that's that Euro dollar trade. And then finally, to finish off, is gold. Um, there was a bit of discussion this week in terms of uh, the analysis on this. Uh, gold is starting to stagnate. It is making higher highs and higher lows. Still gives me confidence that the market wants to go higher. Hasn't quite yet hit hit our 4% profit target. It's hit the 3% profit target. So our stop on position 2 is at the 2% mark. So well out of danger. Um, it's starting to move slowly higher. We are seeing a little bit of divergence, which gives me a bit of cause for concern. So what I'm keen to do is move my stop underneath this swing low here. Because if that gets broken to the downside, that will give me cause for concern. So um, I don't want to move it too close to price because this could have another strong move up. But I do want to try and lock in a bit more profit because I've been sat in this position for such a long time. It would be a shame to give back any more than 1% of the profit that we're taking. So stop loss underneath this low here, locking in another 2.5% to go with our initial 1%. So a very, very healthy trade, but potentially it could go a little bit higher. So I want to give it room to breathe. It still looks nice in terms of its cyclicity. However, there are starting to be some technical causes for concern. So this is where my 2% discretionary element comes in. And I say, Tom, rather than sticking rigidly to your rules of trailing, use a bit of common sense and start to trail with the price action and the swing lows. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Start trailing my stop underneath the swing lows. If this goes higher next week, I will then move it underneath this swing low because all I want to do is try and lock in more and more profit but not move the stop so close to price that I get pinged out for the market to then have another strong move higher. So that's gold. And again, gold is lovely to look back on. Um, this is not to, to gloat or anything like that because... Um, I'm here to teach you techniques that you guys can use yourselves, but it's really quite amazing when you see this happen, when you do your analysis to pick essentially the bottom of the downtrend market. Like People say you can't pick tops and bottoms, however, with technical analysis, you absolutely can. And in this example here, it confirms that that is the case. We've been sat in this trade for quite a long time now, but... Um, our reasons for entry were strong and our reasons for management were very, very strong. It has kept us in this trade all the way up, um, almost a thousand points um, and three and a half, nearly four percent, potentially going to five percent on this trade, which is absolutely wonderful. So a really, really nice example that we looked back all the way back in December and a great thing to build your confidence and a great thing to build your belief system. Absolutely wonderful. And one that I'm watching um, for you guys to uh, to keep your eye on is uh, is the FTSE. It's uh, it's been a very very nice trending asset class for quite some time now, and uh, it's reached a significant high at the uh, six eight seventy level, uh, where it topped out previously in the middle of January, which we took that trade if you can remember it well, and also it topped out pretty significantly in May 2013 as you can see here came all the way up hit its head and bang had a phenomenal move lower so I'm watching this level quite closely especially for next week it's almost interesting these two bars here something happened there if we can see these two bars here where it pushed higher and stopped and then again pushed higher and stopped at exactly the same price so there are people there there are sellers there not wanting it to go higher haven't got the divergence yet however on this next move up it'd be brilliant it'd be absolutely brilliant and ideal if it pops up a little bit higher breaks the high and gives us that divergence and also the key bar if we get these lovely high test bars or an inside bar etc such as like this one here such as like these two here if we get that little pop higher 
absolutely we want to be looking to take advantage of this trade because if it does a similar scenario to what it did back in 2013 or back in October or back in January then the potential for a nice return on our investment is absolutely brilliant so that's one to watch so I'm going to wrap up there a very mixed week this week um, don't get despondent because you've got to think about the bigger picture the majority of the weeks since the start of this year have been absolutely fantastic this week's been very mixed but capital preservation was the order of the week to make sure that we don't give back those hard-earned profits and we keep chipping away and keep growing our capital month in month out we've got the excitement of a new month starting uh, next week so keep implementing everything you know is right from the technical standpoint Keep implementing everything you know which is right from a risk management perspective and also a trade management perspective and you'll be absolutely fine and you'll have another strong month in March. So I'll wrap up there. Hope this video has helped. Um, really, really pleased that the uh, the book, the new market wizards that I recommended to you, many of you have purchased that and are already seeing some, uh, some, some fantastic uh, benefits from the book from a motivational and an inspirational uh, perspective but also to understand those critical ingredients that surround your strategy. Those are the things that will make you a great trader. Not the strategy itself, that is important, but it's the glue surrounding the strategy that keeps it all together that's essential. So if you haven't yet purchased that book, I urge you to get it because it's absolutely wonderful. Okay, have a great trading week and I will catch up with you very soon indeed. All the very best.